Hi, I'm Amy Bodkin, Special Needs Consultant at a Charlotte Mason Plenary. Today we'll be talking about Principles 5 and 6 from Charlotte Mason's 20 Principles. This is part of the free 20 Principles study over at Charlotte Mason Plenary's website. I break up the principles into three basic categories. There's body, mind, and soul, spirit, whatever you want to call that part that's not your body and not your mind. The first eight principles really talk about how we treat our children physically. And then the next several principles after principle number eight talk more about our child, how we treat our child's mental mind. And then the last several principles talk more about how we regard our children's spirit or soul. And so today we will be talking about principles five and six. And this is really that um, environment, the physical environment that uh, regards how we treat our children physically. Principle number five, therefore we are limited to three educational instruments, the atmosphere of environment, the discipline of habit, and the presentation of living ideas. The PNEU motto is, education is an atmosphere, a discipline, and a life. And this is really just the beginning saying that we have three different instruments available to us. So the real meat of what we're talking about today is that first instrument, atmosphere, which is what principle number six is all about. When we say that education is an atmosphere, we do not mean that a child should be isolated in what may be called a child environment, especially adapted and prepared but that we should take into account the educational value of his natural home atmosphere, both as regards persons and things, and should let him live freely among his proper conditions. It stultifies a child to bring down his world to the child's level. So, one of the things I want you to notice is that atmosphere means both people and things. A lot of times when we talk about a home atmosphere, we tend to think as homeschoolers about what our house looks like, what educational tools we have in our home, what our children are being um, surrounded by in their environment. Are they being surrounded by great art, great music, um, science? But it's not really about the tools we buy or how we decorate our homes. What it's really about is the people that we are because who we are has a huge influence over our children. And that's why back in principle number four, she was saying that we can't use undue influence on our children. And a lot of that is because we already have a huge amount of influence over our children. And we really can't afford to influence them more than we already do. We have that relationship with them. They, if we have a positive relationship with them, they want to, um, sometimes be more like us or um, go with the beliefs and ideas that we have. But they need to make those choices for themselves and we can't overly influence them. But we do already just by being ourselves. How mentally healthy we are does have a great impact on how mentally healthy our children will be. How we treat ourselves will greatly influence how our children grow up and treat themselves or their children. Um, if we never allow ourselves to sit down and take a break and we feel like we always have to be cleaning or taking care of the house or that our value is in what we do, our children are going to take in those subliminal messages. And when they grow up, more times than not, that's probably what they're going to end up doing too. Um, they're also going to be influenced by our interests. Our family has a complete nerd culture, and so our children are automatically influenced by that just because that's what we're interested in. They're, inter they're influenced by our interest in handicrafts. It's not that we purposefully think, which things do we want to be placed around the house to provide them with a rich educational environment. It's the things that we have around our house because of who we already are. And so you don't have to worry about trying to find all the right things or um, create the perfect environment that looks like a Charlotte Mason learning space. It's about being the best you that you can be. Um, and it's also important for special needs families, especially anybody who's had trauma in their life, especially to remember the airplane analogy that if you're on an airplane, 
and you lose oxygen, you need to put your own mask on first and then your child's because you can't help your child if you've passed out due to lack of oxygen. And it's the same way in our homes. You can be the best homeschool mom in the world, do all the right things, but if you're not taking good care of yourself, if you're not taking care of your own mental health, you're not teaching your kids good habits of how to take care of themselves and treat themselves when they grow up to be adults and parents just like you. So what I want you to think about this week is how are you taking care of yourself? What are areas of your life that you'd like to work on to improve so that we can provide a more positive environment for our kids so they won't struggle with the same things? When I was a teenager, my parents went through a lot of therapy um, due to baggage that they got passed down to them from their parents. And one of the things I always like to say is that every step they took was one less step I had to take because we passed down baggage from generation to generation. And each generation has to deal with combating the negative things that we've passed down as well as enjoying the positives. We can't fix all of the problems that might get passed down to our children. But every step we take is one less they have to take. Sometimes we don't want to battle our inner demons. But if it means helping our children to not have to battle those same inner demons, I find that a lot of times parents will do things for their children that they won't do for themselves. And so think about what are some of those things that you don't necessarily want to do for yourself, but will create the best atmosphere for your children, and be that thing, that one step, that your children don't have to take. Don't forget to subscribe to the Plenary YouTube channel so you get notified as each new video comes out, and definitely head over to the website and check out the rest of our 20 Principles videos. Rachel did a great one on Principles 5 and 6 as well. I will see you next time as we discuss Principles 7 and then next video after that, eight. See you soon.